Welcome to the Accenture Innovation Hub in Essen. Today we would like to show you how drones can be used in inspections, especially for inspections of mobile phone towers, um, to do checks if, for example, all the antennas are in alignment, if all the equipment is are still there where it's supposed to be. And we will show you how this can be done in a very automated way um, with AI technology to analyze uh, the results and automatically produce the reports. We are here in the lucky position that uh, our innovation hub um, is located in the middle of the UNESCO World Heritage Site Zeche Zollverein. So we have quite a number of industrial uh, towers, buildings, um, and so on, former processing uh, units next to our office. And we are also lucky that we have a mobile phone tower um, with 5G antennas, literally, I think, 150 meters away. So we set up here for uh, this presentation um, a, a short demo um, with uh, an inspection of that tower. So our office is here, and um, we will um, do the inspection of this very high tower here. And the first step um, was to define the mission. So um, we tell it um, what quality we want, and in this case we took the absolute maximum possible. And um, we um, also define a little bit um, uh, the maximum flight height and where obstacles can be um, expected. The system then calculates, um, uh, based on the type of drone we have, uh, a flight pattern. Um, so in this case, uh, we use a DJI Mavic 2 Pro. Um, and for example, the resolution of the camera has an impact on how many pictures need to be taken in order to achieve the, uh, it, the desired, uh, 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 for example, uh, 0.1 centimeter per pixel. Um, and um, so the, this is now the flight path that the drone will fly. Estimated flight time is 59 minutes. That's a lot. Uh, but um, we can adjust it by, for example, only flying or uh, well, looking at the top section of the tower or by uh, reducing, for example, the resolution. But uh, for the sake of the demonstration here, we took the maximum um, uh, uh, resolution here to give to show how much uh, we can we can move uh, the system here to the limits. You see here now my colleague Gökai. Uh, he is outside our office next to the uh, tower where the antennas sit on top. And he is uh, using a special uh, application, an app on his mobile phone that is provided by the software partner that we use. And that's a Beehive. And the Beehive app now uh, allows him to open the mission that we created earlier. And he simply um, then confirms that the, he is at the location and then the drone starts its flight. Um, the flight itself is fully automated, um, but there's a pilot needed within visual line of sight to check that everything is okay and can also stop in case there is an emergency. This solution is more meant uh, for the scenario where you are uh, inspecting a large number of assets, for example, thousands of mobile towers in the country, um, and where you have to drive to the location anyway. Uh, so it's not a fully automated flight. Uh, the assumption is that there's a, a person going there um, uh, with a drone. And that's why also focus is on not buying extremely expensive drones, but more, let's say, commodity drones, so that we can scale that. Um, and uh, give uh, basically every worker that is field worker a drone to do the inspections when they, when they need to. Um, the execution, however, as mentioned earlier, is completely automated. Um, then afterwards, the pictures are uh, downloaded from the memory card of the drone. It would be perfect if, if the app would do that directly, but unfortunately, due to the vendor here of the drone, it's not possible to download the full resolution pictures directly on the mobile phone. So we need to do that a little bit manual step of downloading it and then uploading it to the VHive platform. The VHive platform then usually needs a couple of hours to process the uh, inspection flight. 
Um, and the result can be then seen here. This is now a 3D model of the entire building. And we can see the equipment here on top. Um, we can also use this, um, for example, to um, do some measurements. So we can, for example, see, okay, the distance from here to here is, for example, four meters. And um, so it's a fully interactive model. And uh, what is really amazing is that the AI system also identified automatically the equipment that has been installed. So I see here the uh, panel here. Um, in this uh, demo, we, we cannot uh, recognize the uh, vendor, but that would be possible if we would train the model. Uh, so it just identified here that it's an antenna uh, panel, and um, it shows the exact height, the length, width, depth, and the azimuth tilt, and so on. So you can check that the antenna sits as it's supposed to be, um, that it has the right angle, which could have been, for example, um, incor could be incorrect, for example, because of a of a storm or uh, something like this, or it was probably installed improperly. And this is important in order to make sure that you um, are having the right uh, coverage that you expect. So we, that is something, if, this, um, if there is a misalignment between the configuration data and what is actually now the situation at the site, then we can trigger an instruction slash a maintenance order um, where we would then have to fix the problem and then we could check it again. Then there is a microwave um, sender receiver uh, and other units that have been also identified. Um, more details would be theoretically possible if we would further train the model. However, we don't have access to client data here in this case, so we, we uh, just took the out-of-the-box analysis function, which is already pretty, pretty amazing, I would say. It is also possible to do a so-called um, simulation where you are able to add either, for example, to, um, to look at uh, the equipment from the certain angles. We could also um, add an additional unit. So, for example, how would it look like if I add an additional unit here to the, uh, to the pole? Um, and I could then um, adjust this accordingly um, and say, for example, I want this to be a little bit higher or lower, um, a different held the heading tilt and so on, I can adjust that and manually also enter that. So I can also say that this is 70, um, at the height of 70 meters, okay, this was a bit too much, uh, but um, that, that is more or less than the setup that you are uh, able to do these kind of um, simulations uh, um, to see what if there's additional things you would like to add. The main feature of the solution is, however, that it automatically creates a site survey report. This is usually a very manual effort and takes a lot of pictures that have to be pasted in, CAD drawings to be drawn, measurements to be translated in these drawings and so on. Uh, and this is all happening automatically. So it, it says when has the flight been executed, where is the site? There's some metadata about it, picture from Google Maps um, of where, where the location is. Then there is a tower profile based on the 3D model it auto-created as a picture. And then you have some views of literally the views from the antenna to the surrounding area so that you could have a check, for example, if there's any obstacles um, that could be um, uh, impacting in the reception in some area areas. Um, here we are, of course, so high <laughs> above the ground that there's basically nothing that can, can stop us. Um, there is then um, a compound view, um, which is in this case a little bit incorrect because it's assumed that this uh, water um, channel here that is um, part of the historic coking plant, um, it identified that as a road. Actually, fair enough, yeah, it's, it looks like a road. So, and it automatically identified, for example, that there is the road has a width of 11 meters here. So, in order to give an, uh, an assessment of road access, um, um, for example, how big it is uh, if I want to move a crane in there or something like this. But this is just a side thing. 
And here we see the rooftop uh, with the exact diameters of um, the roof. Um, it automatically created that um, here. Um, also identifying the cabinets that are in the middle of um, the, the tower, uh, where they are, um, how much they um, cover. Here you see a side view of the tower. And then the most relevant part now is uh, actually how many uh, antennas are mounted on that location. You see a side view. And here you see again the uh, entire data from the equipment uh, as a table, um, which we will later also see that can also be exported as a CSV or directly transferred to your configuration data system to compare there with the actuals. So um, what is really also helpful is it automatically creates a CAD file. So you have the side view of the tower. So this you need to turn it by 90 degrees, basically. So this is the, the bottom, this is the top. So you see here that um, the highest uh, elevation level here of the antennas is uh, 47 meters above ground. And um, here you see the roof, um, so here are the antennas, and here are the, is the equipment that is in the middle of the roof. Um, this is all automatically created, so no manual exercise, um, and can be then stored as part of the inspection um, results. You can also export the data in different formats. One export is the equipment list, which is um, a CSV file that includes the entire details of the equipment installed on the tower. In this case, our three panels, two ODUs, one microwave. Again, with the same information, at which height is it installed, diameter, length, and so on, tilt, and so on, all the, the, the basic settings of the antenna. Um, you can, of course, also send this to an external system with a um, interface API. Beehive is also able to export uh, the results of the inspection flight in a number of other formats. An example are the 2D CAD files, for example, for AutoCAD or other uh, software in this area. This is then the same like it is shown in the uh, report, but as a CAD file uh, that can be directly edited in the software then. Another one is um, the uh, IFC uh, data, which is a 3D model of, uh, the, uh, of the building. And that can be, for example, visualized here in uh, for example, Autodesk Viewer. Um, and this, um, with the editing tool, it would be also possible to, to um, further amend it and change it. And this is uh, basically the 3D model that was automatically created out of the, um, out of the scan. And it includes a model of all the components that have been added. They are automatically embedded into the 3D model. So you see the uh, different equipments here that have been identified and they are directly available as a 3D uh, object that can be edited. Another one um, in the exports is uh, the a reality model, as it here called, um, which is basically a laser scan. This is not a laser scan, this is optometrics, um, but it's, it's sort of the look and feel is the same. Um, so I have now here, um, again, I use Autodesk Viewer here in that example. Uh, I can look at the 3D model as it has been also seen in the VHive software. And this is again something that I could further um, use or edit um, in my 3D modeling software. I hope that this short tour of VHive as an example for such an automated inspection process for using drones and artificial intelligence to review assets um, was really helpful. So it's, um, and it, I think there's so many areas here where um, this kind of approach with a lot of automation can simplify um, a lot of work and reduce the manual effort. Example is the extensive um, survey reports that you can uh, that, that are automatically created. The ability to uh, directly compare the 
as is data, so how the antennas are currently fitted right now compared to what I originally wanted them to be installed, um, is really great to um, have a very in, de in detail review and improvements. Um, and then last but not least, it simplifies also later for um, further engineering work and so on to do the planning and the design when you are directly able to import the 3D um, files, the CAD files, or even the laser scan uh, format files into your editing tools so that you don't have to um, create this all from scratch. Um, you can um, base it on uh, the optometrics that have been created by the drone. They're not exact, as exact as a laser scan itself, but I think for this purpose here, that's good enough. Um, uh, and uh, depending on the drone, um, you, you really have a very high accuracy here um, that, um, uh, that is then usually sufficient for these kinds of projects. If this was interesting for you, uh, we would be very glad if you would subscribe to our channel. There's a couple of other showcase videos that we have created. Uh, they're all around um, manufacturing, engineering, project management, and the way we do big projects and run big factories, basically. Um, so I hope you will find many, many other interesting uh, videos here and uh, hope to also see you soon in the Essen Innovation Hub from Accenture. Bye.